Okay. Um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Marcus Harper. I'm a lieutenant with the Tulsa Police Department, and I'm also the president of the Tulsa Black Officers Coalition. Uh, thank you for coming out today. And the reason for this press conference is to directly address the comments made by uh, Major Travis Yates here a few days ago uh, doing an interview. Um, one of the things that we have to understand is, is when, when we go back and, and look at what's been said, we have to go back just a few years in history and look at some other things that have been said by the same individual. In 2016, during the uh, Ferguson protests, we were at war, okay? And that caused a, a pretty much an uproar in our community here in Tulsa and within the Tulsa Police Department. 2016 again, um, you know, he, 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 he says in an, in, in an essay, you know, uh, pretty much comply or die, you know, obey commands or die. Then we go to 2018 and, and he makes the statement that um, a reason that the North Tulsa community appears to be over police is because of fatherless homes in North Tulsa community. And, you know, I, I don't know how you feel about that, but that is an insult to single mothers in the North Tulsa community, my sister being a single mother. And then we get to 2020, okay? 2020, and I really want you to wrap your, 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 your head around this. He says that statistics show that we are killing African Americans at a rate of 24% less than we ought to be. Than we ought to be. So what is he saying when he says we're killing them at a rate less than what we ought to be? Okay? And each individual has to look within themselves to try to decipher what he is saying when he says that, okay? And so the problem is just not with this statement, okay? Because that is his attitude. That is the way he feels about this situation, okay? The problem is that same attitude infects some within the Tulsa Police Department, okay? And when you have that internal attitude that is reflective of what he just said, and I'll say it again, we are killing, we are shooting African-American males at a rate of 24% less than we ought to be, okay? You have officers out here in the street right now working, both black, both white, Asian, members of the LGBTQ community that are working hard and diligently doing the job the right way, building relationships, but it seems like every so often, every time he opens his mouth, we're taking 10 steps forward and taking 100 steps back just because of what this one individual saying. So now you have to ask yourself, is he the voice of the Tulsa Police Department? Okay, is he the voice? Is he reflective of the attitudes of the men and women who go out here and work hard every day trying to make this community better, trying to make this department better? You have to literally ask yourself that question, okay, because no one says nothing. And what happens is he, it, it, it escalates over time. Think about that for a second. We are killing or shooting African Americans at a rate 24% less than what we ought to be. So, with this attitude being inside the police department, as you can imagine, it has caused a strain on the relationship between African American officers and our white counterparts, okay? There's a certain level of fear and intimidation. I would love to have the 8% of the African American officers that are on this police department standing behind me now. But I know, and through my career, I've realized that what happens, I'm on the backside of my career. But these younger guys, there's a level of intimidation that if they want to do things like become detectives or become K-9 or fly helicopters or be become motorcycle officers or become narcotics officers, things that I'm doing now, being their voice, could affect them if they come out and speak against the things that are being said in the media by some members of our police department. I had an interesting conversation with a young white officer a couple of days ago, okay? And he told me, he said, Lieutenant, we're out here doing the best that we can. We're working every day to try to build relationships, to, to try to let people know that we have their best interests at heart. And then a week later, we take the 10 steps back by these statements that are being made by, uh, by uh, Major Yates. Um, so we, 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 we move forward and we say to ourselves, well, what do we do going forward? Do we have a meeting and sit down and we talk about what's said? I, don't, I think we are well past and well beyond having meetings at this point to try to determine um, what we need to do, do moving forward.
The issue is the culture of policing. That's what we're fighting against, the culture of policing, because these are the things that we've done historically. We've done them this way all the time, and just like on your job, if there was a change that was coming down on your job, you would fight it wholeheartedly. You would fight it, okay? And in policing, us being the most powerful people in society, but just because of the authority that you give us to become police officers, we're going to fight that culture change tooth and nail. But best believe that we have people on the inside or internally that are going to continue to fight, continue to try to change because it's time out to be, you know, especially in a state that we're in right now with what we've seen all around the country. Um, and I'm going to say their names, you know, Breonna Taylor, Abad Arbery, okay, George Floyd. I'm going to say their names. And what we saw, especially with the George Floyd murder, was it, it took that to consciously wake up America. That's what it took. The death of a man, the murder of a man on live television, and two weeks later, we we're making statements that we are killing African Americans at a rate 24% less than we ought to be. Less than we ought to be. Okay? At some point, someone is going to have to check the rhetoric. Period. There's no way to explain it away anyway. It is what it is. That's what he thinks, that's his attitude. There are those inside the police department that share those attitudes, but you best believe we're going to keep fighting internally to show you what we Tufts police officers are all about and also what the Black Office Coalition is all about, and we're trying to build bridges and not divide, continue to divide us. I take any questions. Uh, Lieutenant, we have a lot of people tuning in late on Facebook Live. Do you mind okay. to go through your bone class again? Who are you? Okay, I'm uh, Lieutenant uh, Marcus Harper. I'm a lieutenant with the Tulsa Police Department. I am off duty right now. I'm the president of the Tulsa Black Office Coalition. Now, my views and my opinions that I express here at this interview are my views, okay? I am not here representing the Tulsa Police Department, so I want to make that perfectly clear. Lieutenant, on that vein, I spoke with Mr. Yates this morning, and he wanted to uh, insulate the department from his comments. Is it possible for Major to do that? There's absolutely no way because he, he's in a position of power on the police department. He is in a position of power in the police department. His attitude is going to go downhill to that young, brand new officer or that officer who's in field training right now. There's no way to insulate those, those ideas from the police department. Now, we can say that to try to protect ourselves, but in reality, that's, there's no way that can happen. There's no way that can happen. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, and work is on, on Osage. And I, 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 I'm, I'm going to tell you this way. That's, here's the reality of it. That's the way policing, that's the culture of policing. That, that's, the, that's the cold hard facts. That is the culture of policing. Okay? The issue is are you policing other communities the exact same way? That you're in, now listen, that was my neighborhood where I live, where that took place, okay? That was my neighborhood, right down the street from where I live. So are you policing other neighborhoods the exact same way that you are policing North Tulsa neighborhoods? And as a 25 and a half year veteran, it's not happening. And that's the reality of it. That is the reality of it. It is not happening. So we can give all the excuses that they were doing this, they were doing that, and we do, we do this to come up with this. It's not happening in other parts of town. Oh. I'm not even sure what's going on with the internal affairs investigation. Um, I, 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 I've, here's the atmosphere, okay? It's going to be tight-lipped. They're going to do the investigation. I have confidence in the investigators that work in internal affairs that they'll do a thorough investigation. But here's the deal. Nothing is going to be leaked out to the media regarding that investigation. You guys remember my incident that happened about a year and a half ago, what happened to me. And I was actually targeted because of my views and things were put out to the media. And then here we go, a direct attack on my reputation. Okay, so the internal affairs guys are going to do what they do and then we're going to come up with something. But at the end of the day, does the culture change? You know, is there going to be an officer out here tonight that's going to go to work that's going to do the exact same thing? That's not going to be called on video. We can talk about stats all we want to talk about stats, and the FBI says this, and the recent crime that it says this. But what's happening, what's not happening on video? 
in my opinion, the reason that the people in the Minneapolis community are so enraged is not necessarily because of what they saw on video. It's because this community has been telling you for decade upon decade upon decade that these things are happening off camera, okay? My dad always told me, young man, all this stuff y'all getting on camera right now, imagine when there were no cameras. That is the culture of policing. That's what we're fighting to change. And until we change the culture internally, we're not going to be able to bridge that gap. And that's just the reality of it. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Sorry. So, um, and we're, uh, Major Yates, we spoke with him, and, and he said, I wasn't, I was citing a source. I was citing a source. These aren't my own words. I'm citing a source. What do you say to that? He said what he said, and he, and he said what he, 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 he's a grown man. He said what he said, and he meant what he said. It's all, it's, it's like he's trying to appease a certain audience, and that audience is the law enforcement community. What's dangerous is when those inside of the law enforcement community are influenced by what he says. That is the issue. That is the issue, and there's no way around it. Uh, the stop involving the two juveniles, uh, is it a fair assessment to call that akin to the stop and frisk of New York? Say, say your question again, sir. Is it fair to say the incident involving the two juveniles would be a stop and frisk like we see in New York? I mean, I, I can't answer that question because I, I don't know what their proper cause was. I'm just seeing what I'm seeing on social media. But, you know, my, like my earlier statement says, you know, if, if, if you're policing other communities that exact same way, I have no issue with it. But I know that that's not taking place. To be clear, are you calling for any kind of action to be taken within TPS regarding Major Yates? TPD. Uh, T, sorry, TPE regarding Major Yates. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not calling for action to be taken, okay, because nothing's going to happen. This is, this is something that's been going on over time, all right? And what can you say to him when he's exercising his First Amendment rights, to be honest with you? He's, not, he's saying that it's not representative of the police department, but the reality of it is is that that attitude is going to trickle down to those within the police department. So I'm not calling for any action to be done. What I'm calling for is just every, to, to be fair about it. If you're going to do something, be fair about it. I fully expect to catch a whole lot of heat because of this press conference right now. That's just the reality of the police culture because I'm speaking out and it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen, you know, but I think my shoulders are big enough to take it. That's my opinion. We got you. Any other questions? That's my actually tough question. Yes. Um, just, just basically, this is, this is a progression in over time. He didn't wake up today or yesterday and decide to make those statements. This is something that's been going on with some inflammatory statements he's been making since 2016. Uh, goes all the way back to uh, fatherless. The reason over-policing is happening in North Tulsa is because of the fatherless homes or him making a statement of, you know, com you know pretty much comply or die or obey or die, or co obey commands and die. And with some other things that he's written, you know, even making a statement that black lives don't matter. To this very day, I mean, I have police officers I work with who just cannot fix their minds to say that black lives matter. Okay? And, I'm, and that's just reality. But, you know, it's, we, 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 we try to excuse it and say those are his own personal views. But in reality, when he says that and he, when he says it to the audience that he does, the reality is, is that it trickles down to younger officers, officers on his police department. There are many that share his views. There are so many that share his views. So, you know, it's, it's and, and as a result, every time all the hard work that we're doing in the community, the strained relationship that we have right now between the African-American officer and some of our white counterparts, it's there, okay? It, it's there, there's no way to avoid it. There's no way, there's no meeting we can have at this point to sit down and try to figure out what we're gonna do next because we're tired of sitting down and talking about it. It's time for some action to take place, so. That's kind of where we are right now. Have you spoken with Major Yates? Do you have any sort of relationship with him at all? I, when I was a rookie, I worked in the squad back in 1995. I did. Um, but right now, we have no relationship. He's a major. I'm a lieutenant. I do my job. He does his job. Lieutenant, do Black Lives Matter? Of course Black Lives Matter. Of course they do. And I think when we start acknowledging that and, and, and treating it with the reverence and respect, just like when we say all lives matter, because in my opinion, when someone says black lives matter and then they turn around and, and, and the response is all lives matter, it's to deflect you from the conversation. Of course, all lives matter. But you know what? Right now, I want to talk about black lives matter. 
tomorrow we can talk about all lives matter, but right now I want to talk about Black Lives Matter. Okay? And that's that's my that's my feelings.